Hello everybody, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you're here. If you're new here, hi, I'm Maddie. I'm a K-5 STEM teacher and ed tech coach in Los Angeles. I post weekly tech tutorials for teachers and I love making tutorial videos. So as you can tell by the title of today's video, I am going to be making a Google Drawings tutorial for teachers. So without further ado, let's get started. So I've gone to drawings.google.com and it opened up this blank page for me here. What I'm going to do with today's beginner tutorial for Google Drawings is I'm gonna walk you through some of the key features. And I hope that this will give you an idea for different ways that your students can use this in the classroom, different ways that you can use this with your students. And so like I said, I'm just gonna walk you through some of the key features. This bar right here, underneath the bar with file, edit, view, insert, format, etc. This bar here with all these different shapes is really gonna be the main bar that we're going to be focusing on. Now this select tool allows you to move different shapes, move the things that you've created. I'm gonna skip over that one for right now, but I did wanna point that out. First, we're actually gonna take a look at this shape tool. Now, if you've ever used some of the Google products before, like Google Slides, for example, you've probably seen this shape tool before. And the way it works is I can click on this button and you'll see that there's now a drop down menu. So we have shapes, arrows, callouts, and equation. So for example, let's say I want to create a shape. I'll hover my mouse over shapes. And let's say I want to pick this sun shape here. So what I can do is I can just click and drag to create my sun. Now you'll see when I click and drag, my sun is auto filled this blue color. Um, so I can change this color. And the way that you change a color of a shape is by going again up to that bar that I'm telling you we're going to keep going back to. You'll see that right now the paint bucket tool that says fill color is actually blue. So when I click on it, you'll see that there's two sections here. This is the same that you've probably seen on Google Slides before. There's a solid section and a gradient section. So for example, if I wanted this to be a solid yellow, I could just click on the yellow. If I wanted it to have a gradient, I could do that by clicking on one of these gradient options. It's kind of hard to see, but hopefully you can tell a little bit. It does have a gradient, but I'm just going to do this solid yellow for now. And I think that looks pretty good like a sun. So now I have my shape selected. I clicked on my shape and you'll see that there's this thin black border here. Now this black border, you do have the ability to change. So next to the paint bucket tool, there is this border color tool. So if you click on that, you can actually change the color of the border. So right now it's this thin black line and I could make it a different color if I'd like. So for example, let's say I wanna make it this orange color. You'll now see that this thin line is now actually orange. You can also change the thickness of this line. So to change the thickness, again, it's right next to the border color tool. It's now the border weight tool. So you can click on it and you can change how many pixels wide the border actually is. So right now I'm probably on one pixel because it's the smallest, thinnest line here, but I can change this to be a bigger number. So for example, let's say I click on four pixels, you'll see that my line is a little bit thicker. Now, one other feature that I do wanna point out is that you can change what the border actually looks like. So right now it's this thick black, or it's this thick orange line you can make it look a little bit different. So for example, if I click on this, you'll see there's a solid line, there's a dotted line, dashed, dots and dashes, bigger dashes, et cetera. So I could make this a dashed line if I wanted. And I think that looks pretty good. So you'll see again, there's a bunch of different options that you can play around with. You can stick to just the plain black line if you'd like, but I think that this is kind of, kind of a fun feature. So now that I've created my sun, you'll see I can move it around. I think I'm gonna to wanna to make another shape. So I'm gonna go back up to this shape tool and maybe this time I will add some clouds. So I'll click on the cloud tool here. Again, to add a shape, I'll just click and drag. Then I'll release when I'm ready. And you'll see it auto-filled again to this same blue shade. Of course, I can change this. And to change it again, as a reminder, you can go back up to the paint bucket tool and you can change the color. You can change the thickness of the line. And I think that looks pretty good. Now you'll notice when I click on the shape, these other options appear at the top here. So you'll see we have font, we have different features on how to adjust the color of the font, for example, the color of the, the text, you can change the alignment. Um, so let me show you basically how this works. So if you have a shape and you double click on it, you'll see that now a line has appeared suggesting that I can actually type here. So for example, you could say, this is a cloud. 
and you'll see that I've now actually typed within this shape. So now if I click and try and move this shape, the text will move along with it. Um, so that's a nice way that you can actually add text inside of a shape. So if with your students you're doing something like a mind map, you're creating a systems map, something that you want your students to actually be able to type into, a Venn diagram, for example, this text trick can be a really helpful tool for your students to use. All right, so again, of course, I can change the font. Let's say I want to make it this luckiest guy font. I want to change my text to white. I can make it bigger. I can center it. What I like about Google Drawings is that it does have a really familiar interface if you are comfortable using some of the other Google products like Google Slides or Google Docs, for example. So now you'll see I've created my, my sun and I've created a cloud with some text in it. Next, I'm going to show you a, another key feature of Google Drawings, which is actually this text box here. So next to the shape tool, you'll see we have the text box tool. To add a text box, you'll just click on it. And now you'll see again, I have this little cross and I can click and drag to create my text box. So here I could actually add a description to my drawing. So I could say something like this is a drawing of the sky. And I've created a text box that I can now move around. So all of these shapes are movable just by clicking on them. And so that's how a text box works. Now the next feature I'm going to show you is next to the text box, and that's how you can insert an image. So if I click on this insert image, you'll see a drop down menu appears. Now you have a bunch of different options to choose from. You can upload an image from your computer. So for example, if you have an image that's actually saved on your computer, you can upload that here. You can search the web, which is what I'm going to do in just a minute. You can upload a photo from Google Drive, from photos on your computer, by a URL, the camera on your computer. So a bunch of different options. Typically the ones that I think most teachers probably will be using are this first one, upload from computer, or this next one, search the web. So I'm gonna click on search the web. I think this is a really handy feature that Google has within some of their products. I really like that I can actually directly search Google images by clicking that button. So I don't have to open up a new tab. I can do everything within Google Drawings. So I might look up something like, sky. And now you'll see that there's this beautiful picture of a sky that pops up. If I like it, I can click on one and then I can click insert. And now you'll see that this image has been added to my drawing. So I can resize it if I'd like. But you'll notice when I resize it, it actually covers up some of the other images here. So you can actually change the order so that this sky can be behind everything. So to change the order, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right click on a PC or control click if you're on a Mac and you'll want to hover over where it says order here and you're going to want to send this to the very back so that it's the very back layer. So now you'll see that my sun and my cloud and my text box are actually all on top of this image here. So that's just sort of a handy trick to use if you'd like to reorder things. So I'm just going to resize this a little bit by dragging the corners. All right. So again, this images tool can be helpful, of course, in inserting images into your Google drawing. Now, a few other features that I want to show you guys before I show you actually how to save this file, how to share it with students. So first, I want to show you guys how to add some shadows, how to add some reflections. So to click, if you click on one of these shapes, you can go over here to where it says format options. Now you'll see that there's size and rotation, position, text fitting, drop shadow, reflection. So I wanna add a shadow to my sun. So to do that, I'll click on this button that says drop shadow. Now you'll see, it's a little bit tricky, kind of hard to see, but now you'll see that there's actually a shadow behind my sun. So this is a nice way to make it sort of three dimensional, pop out a little bit. I like adding that to some of my images to kind of make them stand out. We'll do the same thing for the cloud here, but instead we'll actually do the reflection. So you'll see we're on this format options uh, button here. And if I click on reflection, you'll see that this uh, cloud is actually reflected down below. Now you can change sort of the transparency, the distance, the size. So you'll see, for example, if I increase the transparency, it becomes really hard or impossible to see. You can change the distance. It actually is a way so that from the cloud, so that can add some depth. You can also change the size, how much of the reflection you'd like to see. So that's another cool way to sort of add dimension, make your drawings a little bit more interesting. 
we've gone over some of the basic features here. I've shown you how to add shapes, add shadows and reflections to those shapes. I've shown you how to create a text box, how to add text within a shape, how to uh, insert an image, how to search the web. And so now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you can actually share this file with students. Now, just like how you can share files with students in Google Drive, Google Slides, there is this big share button in the top right hand corner that says share. Now you can click on that. You can type in students email addresses and that's how you can share this file with them. But you also can share this file in a different way. You can actually export Google drawings to turn into images that are saved on your computer. So to do that, first, I actually want to give this a title. So I'm going to say sky drawing. And now to actually export this, you can go to file, download. I can download this as a PDF, a JPEG, a PNG, or an SVG file. So really I'm gonna focus on the differences here between a JPEG and a PNG. Basically the way a JPEG works is that this entire, uh, this entire canvas here will save with a white background. So basically the way it'll look like is that there's a white, almost like a white piece of paper with these different elements on top of it. Now a PNG, everywhere where you see this checkered background, that will actually be invisible. So that the way that this file would then save is as a PNG, so sort of like stickers, for example, that you could actually put on top of something else. So that's kind of how I like to explain the differences between a JPEG and a PNG. I am gonna have an overlay right here so you can see the differences. So on the left-hand side, we have a JPEG example, and on the right-hand side here, we have a PNG example. All right, before we end off today's video, I do want to point out, I just went over a couple of the different features. This is very much a beginner's tutorial of Google Drawings. Now, of course, there's this menu up here with a bunch of different options. You can insert different things. You could add diagrams, word art. You can add lines to connect different ideas to each other. You can change formatting. You can change the arrangement of things. So there are other features that I did not point out. Again, this is very much a beginner's tutorial to Google Drawings. I hope you find this video to be helpful in thinking about ways you can use Google Drawings with your students. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed this Google Drawings tutorial. If you liked it, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Like I said, I post weekly tech tutorials for teachers, and I'll see you back here soon. Bye, friends.